Now, Mr. Kia, next question concerning this record. Would you mind going under the skin, going track by track, and doing their call analysis for Megalomaniac? Okay, as I as as I can say, uh, all the song have the same story, have the same story, but uh, the difference is with between the megalomaniac track is only the timeline. Okay, um, it's a it's all about a fantasy about the darkness war on humanity from the dawn of time until uh, the present day. Okay. Uh, uh, each track is about a fallen angel uh, who has turned against a good and become the devil. Uh, the lyrics were written to express the transitions for from greatness to despair. Uh, that's all I can say. I just like impress his feelings uh because uh as you know it's it's all about a fantasy because i i love to watch movie like something like a lot of the rings uh like um a messiah something like that right no i get what you mean uh, it's so all, it's, it's, all, it's all about the same story but the difference is only the timeline <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's no it's actually really cool and i mean that's one way to write a record man is to be telling the same story but in different like time frames and different time eras yeah. and stuff so w would you mind then being that you know where it all kind of it connects that way it connects really really um it's almost like really the only difference is like song by song and time period by time period so like i don't know if if we have that in mind what are some of the time periods that are like mentioned throughout all these tracks? And would you mind uh, providing us the insight upon that? I'm yeah, wait, yeah, just forgot. <laughs> yeah. So starting okay. with track one, then on the record, because I I don't have the track list on me, and I mean the only uh, thing you guys have sent track over is uh, Megalomania. Okay. Okay. It's all it's all about like uh it's all about the it's all about some about the base. want to take the like ah, I forgot by the way megalomaniac megalomaniac <laughs> megalomaniac it's, it's okay <laughs> okay so. as as you know uh, the lyrics is all about the darkness and it's all about the darkness and the first human creations uh, uh, I add some like uh, from the Islamic Islamic and from the Bibles from the Bibles and the Islamic facts uh, and then I convert it to my story. Uh, it's all about, like, you know, as you know, the as the first human creations, uh, God say you have to bow to Adam, something like that. And then uh, 
he didn't want to bow to Adam and then uh God give him curse, something like that. And he he wanted to declare declaring war between the between him and the humanity. Uh something like that I guess for me. As I can say it's all the same things, but a really different sure. timeline. Right, right. So, so more or less, like as we're going throughout this record and stuff, you have the main title track, which is the you know, it's the introduction to the album. It's the introduction to all of these songs residing in the same story, but different points in time. So, yeah. with track two, for example, um, because I I don't know the name of the track, but track what would be two is uh, Throne of Misery. Oh, Throne of Misery. Okay, this is Throne of Misery. It's slowly focusing <laughs> because okay as you know in his is, is as you know in islam uh yeah there it is there uh, we go okay our uh, throne of misery <laughs> as you know in islam we have uh we have azazel right azazel oh, in islam he was uh something like a an angels okay. uh, who lead the angels who lead the angels to pray to God, something like that. And after that, he he was on the top. He was on the top after God. Azazel is the second one. And after that is the, the the angel, all the angels. But after the after after the human creations uh of Adam and he go to <laughs> down uh, uh, something like that. That thing refused to bow. Uh, <clears throat> so it's fantasy war. <clears throat> you can say that. Yeah, but we convert it to the fantasy, right? Because uh, we don't we don't want to uh to. What, confuse or to disrespect get into, uh, to get into to religious uh right. as i can say uh we just say it, uh fantasy war because it is on it's all about our uh imagination uh imaginations yeah right so you like i mean essentially megalomaniac yeah. and most of the uh, mismata discography with this album it's it's fiction it's fiction, yeah, it's fiction. based fiction. off of uh, and mix some um mi and mix some uh like the fact of the from the bible or something like yeah um, it's like your own version it, of those uh, events yeah. really that way yeah. it's it is fiction and it's not like being disrespectful yeah. or you know like anything like that to religious texts which is important yeah. Um, if you're not wanting religious confrontation uh, yeah. in your audience and your fan base. So, Thrones of Misery, that's mostly because, talking uh, about Azazel, right? Yeah. Or, okay. And then track three, um, I know Afik had um, the list up. So, if we can, um, if... Uh, if Let me see it. My it's camera a... sucks in all the focus. Your gut doesn't exist. Uh, your gut doesn't exist. Okay. Thank you. 
Have one, two, uh, eleven. Have eleven. Uh, Sean, uh, your your mic is muted. Yes, oh, I'm back okay. again. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so your god doesn't exist. What's that one about? I'm like residing within the megalomaniac storyline. Uh, and if anything, yeah. I'll we'll uh, just have you uh, name uh, off the tracks okay. as we're going along. <laughs> sure. As you know, in Malaysia, we cannot say anything about the religion. Uh, right. And and then and then the after the megalo uh, after the your god doesn't exist was released into the youtube yeah. we got a lot of lot of the bad Fresh. feedback <laughs> uh, we got yeah. a lot of feedbacks but for me uh let me to be clear about the your god doesn't exist it's not about the religions it's not all about the antichrist or something like that it's all about your your dark side uh it's uh your dark side something like when you got into a problem like your parents passed away someone you love left you uh your your siblings betray you and yeah. when you in in hot when when you in hot situations uh that kind of some like whispering in your ear, oh, you you believe your God, you believe your God, then now you lose everything. So where is your God right. now? So if your God didn't help you in this time, so your God doesn't exist. Uh, that's that's kind of ideas that I got from my personal life also. Right. Like okay. a uh, because 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 uh, I lose my parents in uh, twenty fourteen. Uh, they have cancer. Oh shit! Uh, I'm they, sorry. Uh, they they die in fighting cancer. Uh, my father uh have a blood cancer. Okay, blood cancer. Uh, leukemia, and my mother is have a lung cancer. So it's all about uh, my personal. I right. have to put my personal story in the your God doesn't exist. So your God doesn't exist. It's not simply saying that, you know, there is no God, but like regarding loss, regarding when things yeah. go bad. It's like, you know, it happened in the first place. Uh, for example, yeah. up for, on their, their upcoming album, this uh, one of their songs, Earthen, it's about like, how here in the u.s most of the time kids actually die from cancer and it's like what one of the lyrics is what kind of god would test a child what kind of god right. would take the children away from us like that type of thing it's that same mindset it's like yeah even if your god does exist which we're neutral on that even if he does exist then why is he killing people with cancer all the time that don't deserve it or like why is he causing natural disasters causing famine causing plague it's the same thing it's the same exact thing yeah. so that's yeah i love that you guys have a song like that on this album just because it it brings the necessary awareness to the table that even if god does exist bad shit still happens all the time and half the time it doesn't even happen to bad people it happens to innocent people and then if you dig a little bit more into it which uh, me and Chase Wilson from Old Sulfur also dug into this a little bit for concerning the album. Um, it's like when people are so openly willing to saying it was the will of God that those people passed away or it was the will of God that those kids were tested by obtaining by getting cancer. It's like, don't you think that's a little bit sick in the head? Yeah. And that's that's how I think. That's how I present that. I don't know if that's how you guys present that. But for me, it's like, it's almost, it's more terrifying than being in a dark room, possibly with a demonic entity that's still lingering there because other people who were fools before 
decided to conjure it into the room, right? You're like, in that in that moment, you're like, this is actually more psychotic than those people that decided to just summon the demonic entity into the room. It's like they're so openly openly willing in their mourning, in their loss, in their grieving process to think that it was the will of God that my child was taken from me. Or in Key's um, in Key's story, it's like it was the will of God that my parents, both of them, passed away from cancer. Which I'm I'm so sorry to hear, man. And I hope they rest in peace. I hope they're doing well in a better place. But like when people are so openly willing to accept that as the will of God, that's what's kind of psychotic to me. And it's the reason that religion kind of ruins a lot of aspects in life because you have so many people like that who are willing to bow down on their knees and say, oh, the famine that just wiped half of us out made most of our children sick and die. It was all the will of God. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, not really. But oh, well, people have their beliefs. And after all, believing yeah. isn't knowing. So it's like sometimes it's better to have that belief instead of knowing the scientific parameters of what was happening. You know, maybe it was something in the water. Maybe it was something in the food. But they're like, oh, it was the will of God. Uh, and I'm like, no, y'all are fucking <laughs> psychotic. <laughs> y'all are nuts. But um, that that's really cool that you guys decided to present a song like that on the album. So track four, we have Eternal Hatred. This is Eternal Hatred featuring Atik. What is this about, Key? Eternal Hatred is all about Azazel. It's about Azazel, the fallen angel in Islam, who had uh, the human, who had the Adam and the rest of the humans. Uh, because uh, he will live until the, the end of time. I mean, like, until the doomsday. He, he want to bring all the, all the human to hell, uh, give them some like, uh, do telling them to do bad things, uh, you, and you can go to hell with me because I had a lot of, I had, uh, human, uh, something like that uh, and provoke, uh, the human to do bad things. Yes. Right. So eternal hatred is about. Azazel's eternal hatred for the human race. Yep. 
Sweet. Okay. So track four, we have really my gateway track into starting to listen to this band, wanting to get them on the podcast. We have Jepeshmos featuring Greg Gilbert of Shrine of Malice. <laughs> What is this one about? Sephosmos, okay. The, the interest the most interesting in Sephosmos is about the titles. Okay, I, I got the titles from I, I guess from the Greek. Uh right. if you translate if you translate Sephosmos into uh, English, uh you can get uh downfall. It means downfall. Uh so like it, if you go into the islamic history uh so uh the demon or the evils uh will born if you do something bad they will born from your from your like yeah. empty heart you don't believe in something like something like a good things you just do a bad things then they will reborn from that kind of i mean like that kind of stuff right so then downfall would be about just like how uh, pessimism can tear people down and ruin their lives yeah yeah something like that cool and what was the obviously like greg gilbert is an excellent vocalist he's a buddy of mine he's been buddies of mine for like a long time now what was the reason for choosing him to feature on this track Ooh. as you know uh, Greg is one of my big influence, and and I think Greg uh, will be uh, a perfect featuring for the the song because, as you know, the the soul album from the Shrine of Malice it's very very dark, and I think if I is if I have feature with Greg, this song will be, will be sick. Right. Yeah, no, Sheol is like one of the most iconic records, I think, for the Black and Death yeah. Core genre. So Ooh. I completely understand that. And I'm thinking, I cannot confirm this, ladies and gentlemen, but I do have a, uh, I did a deposit with him to do a vocal cover for Lorna Shore's Warpath of Disease. And, you know, the cover that was presented in the end was just me. And that was quite some time ago. But because I never got that money back from him, most likely he will be featuring uh, on the next Blind Without Our Failures track for a song called Primitive Instinct. But I have no idea yet. That's one of my intentions just because I've already paid him. So, I mean, I might as well utilize that opportunity while I can. So, um, yeah, people, if if you want to have a little headcanon, and this is just to the audience, this is not to the 
members in chat exclusively, but I might be featuring him on my next song because he's an iconic vocalist and yeah. I, I'm more than aware <laughs> of like all the things that have happened recently in his life to him um, because of him more or less, but he has atoned. I think he's taken the necessary steps to atone for what happened and therefore I have every intention to feature him in my music. That will be something I look forward to, whether it be Primitive Instinct or another future track. So shout out to Greg Gilbert, as always. But track six, we have The Unholy. going on here unholy 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 uh it's all about uh unholy uh, 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 uh human belief the uh, human belief a human belief uh this the i mean the the wrong messiah uh as you know as you, as i can say like, like before we, we we take it uh the ideas of the lyrics from the the islamic and the bible something like that and then we believe one day uh there's one there's one man will come to the earth and and claiming himself uh, as a messiah. Uh, so, and then, uh, and then the, the unholy is talk about the, the false messiah. They yeah, believe the, the false messiah and do like something preparing, preparing for the, the messiah and like, they are doing like something like the new world order. They, they want to be a one nation, something like that. Right. Uh, they do. Uh, they're doing like uh some like uh beyond the human human nature, like uh something like human experiment experimentations. Uh, they're controlling the 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 war by proxy something like that they're right. trying to control the the wall right so the unholy is more or less about what could be um the new world order yep something like that sweet track seven we have black moon
What is this about? Black Moon. Okay, Black Moon is is all about uh uh the war before the doomsday. Uh, before the doomsday, the Black Moon, because uh, Black Moon is uh, I, I used to put in the title, uh, because there's something like when you got into the war in the doomsday, there's no light. I mean, I used to use metaphor for the titles, uh, right. the Black Moon. So something like you you got into the uh, the demonic war something like the war before the doomsday you like pretend to have a such a such a a good view of your place or whatever uh so that things like black moon so you that mean like the environment is so dark there's no light over day, uh, something like that. Right. So Black Moon could easily be about because you you mentioned like the final war before Doomsday. So I mean, Black Moon could easily be alluding to hopefully what will not be, but what could be World War Three and how by the end of it, like basically everything yeah. will be wiped out. There will be absolutely nothing left. And I mean, shit, if it's anything like Revelations, we might have like multiple volcanoes erupting and therefore the skies will fill with ash and it'll be cold, but you'll be choking on the ash. And therefore there's absolutely nothing left to, uh, to secure because everything has been burnt to the ground and then there is no light. There is no silver lining because the moon is in a solar eclipse, which is really excellent imagery in any situation for like just darker times and just revelations and just prophecies being unveiled and stuff and i mean i think this ends up kind of colliding too with the album really well just because everything's on fire and there are corpses everywhere now it, it might not be like pitch black because you know if it was then you wouldn't see anything on the album cover now would you um but instead, we have, you know, a landscape that is just ridden with flames and corpses and agony and pain as Doomsday unleashes itself upon the world, whether that be the interpretation provided in Revelations or in other faiths. So that's really cool. Really black and deathcore really does fit well with the aesthetic that you guys seem to be pushing towards. I like it. So we have track eight, Nyctophilia. What is this about? <laughs> okay, Nyctophilia is all about uh, it's all about also like like the Black Moon. Uh, but this time I I used to Nyctophilia 
uh, because uh, we are we are human. We are went to dark, like spending your time in a in a dark room. Uh, and you you think like you lose all your hope, uh, to survive, and you just pretending you like, oh, I'm dead already, or something like that. Like so, I might as well be dead. I, I I don't I don't I don't need to to fight. I don't need to fight, something like that. I don't need to fight. I just spend my time for the rest of my time in the dark room, in the dark, dark, something dark era, something like that. Right. <laughs> well, that was smoke. <laughs> I thought yeah. I thought he was about to disappear for a second. <laughs> Hope gone. <laughs> Um, no, that's, that's, I mean, it's a continuation. It really is a lyrical continuation of Black yeah. Moon. It's this deprivation yeah, of self. Uh, like, as you, as you can see in the lyrics, say like something like the doc, uh, try to convince the human, like, uh, I forgot, wait, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Ectopilia. Man, I see that smoke going to the uh, other uh, camera now. That shit's uh, traveling. Uh, is, he say like, kneel to the ground and pray to your savior, uh, something like that. The dark, the darkness that scar you. It is your desire, something like that. That uh, he trying to convince the the humans to spend his time to, to the dark. Something yeah. Like that. No, I, I get what you mean. Like, nyctophilia, because, I mean, philia, for one, that's usually, like, a sexualization and stuff. So, nyctophilia, it could be the perversion, this, like, a demonic entity or an evil embodiment of yeah. some sort convincing and trying to brainwash yeah. the human race into thinking that this is what you want. You want to reside in darkness. You want to devolve. Yeah. You want to become nocturnal. That's what I mean. You like you you are going to lust for this because this is your this is your reality. This is your world now. It's just this loss of hope. There is no hope. But what you can do is feed off of the fear and despair and almost like perverse it. You can almost like sexualize it if you're a passionate about it enough, which that's a really good metaphor for just I don't know, just being brainwashed into thinking new things and like what you didn't think before like was true basically what is true now like that's that's your that's your gospel is darkness and it's nice and gothic i like it this good <laughs> nyctophilia could easily be a cradle of filth track and it, it could already be and i just have no clue who knows um track nine we have centuries of profane transcription <laughs>
I have a feeling right off the bat that this is a continuation of nyctophilia because Sentry is a profane transcription. It's like that's just a continuing brainwashing and this continuing mindset of, oh, you know you love the darkness. I'm like, yeah, I like villains, <laughs> but not that much. And it's just like, yeah, it's there is no God. The, you get yeah, it, yeah? It's continuing the, the, the story. You get it. But uh for the, but for the but for the centuries of prophet's transcription is is it's all about the new era i mean the from the different tribe timeline it's uh, like the modern era uh <clears throat> it's right. all it's, as i can say it's 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 the same story just uh i mean storyline yeah. Continuing by the title by titles. Right. And perhaps too with track nine, it's like, okay, so we're familiar with this perversion of darkness and despair and just being this being these new nocturnal incarnations of humanity. And with centuries of profane transcription, when I see the word transcription, I'm like, okay, so maybe they're rewriting the Bible in a way too. This, these demonic entities that are ascending or descending upon earth, unleashing hell, causing volcanoes to erupt across the globe, wiping out millions. They're like, okay, so now everything's done. Now everything is darkness. The skies are filled with volcanic ash and they're not going anywhere. And even if they do go somewhere, well, the moon is eternally eclipsed. So with that in mind, it's like, okay, now that you guys realize that this is what you have to deal with now. Let's go ahead and get it on paper. You know, let's get a receipt for this shit, shall we? <laughs> like, who, who knows, man? Chapter 10, or pardon me, track 10, chapter of decadence. This is chapter of decadence. What is cadence. this one about? Uh, chapter of decadence. Uh, wait, I. I oh, decadence, right? Oops. <laughs> the lyrics. The lyrics. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot the lyrics. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> this need a minute or. No problem. I, I mean, my, my impression that this is continuing from track from seven, eight, and nine, it's like chapters of decadence could be those new chapters, uh, those new rewritten chapter, chapters in the in this like uh, new Bible. Chapter of decadence is all about uh, uh, it's all about uh, I mean, like the war is all is going to end. Uh, it's it's going to end. Chapter of decadence. Uh, and the darkness have won the war. Have won the war, so the humanity will lose the war, and they get into dark. Uh, they're descending into dark new times. Ah, uh, the dark new times. Sweet, and then chapter eleven, Helegian.
which I have and a feeling this is a play on the word legion, is it? And legion. Right. And legion is uh is is uh it's all about uh uh back from the from the start about the human creation. Right. And this is the and this is the, the end. The first and the the end of the story hell legion because uh uh in the in hell legion i i i said in the hell legion it's all like something like uh when you go into hell uh the, all the human will go to like go to azazel and ask why why you do do these things like why you whispering us to do a bad things uh so uh in that time uh azazel will stand and talk about about uh all things from the start from the beginning and until the end of times i mean like as you know like, like chapter of decades in the new era, the new like uh almost the end of the war and religion is the, the the end of the war uh, we are going to we are going to meet our god and we have a judgment we are going to hell you are going to heaven then when that time come uh we will ask him we will ask him why you do that why you whispering us to do that things what uh then he he will uh explain he will himself. Have, uh, we, he will explain himself and have a speech to humans and he said like don't blame me don't blame blame yourself uh, don't blame me but blame yourself uh <laughs> no that's, that's really cool that's a really great uh, way to wrap up the me, album blame yourself uh because uh because he just whispering us to do a bad things but he didn't force us like physically to do a bad things right it's all about us it's all about us that's no, uh, it's great <laughs> and then like something like it's all about him to convince us to do a bad things and this is the end and we asked him and he explained everything from the start, from the beginning until the end of time, the doomsday, right. I mean, uh, something like that. Right. And that's more or less what megalomaniac is, is him like telling yeah. them the reason why all this happened and yeah. why they are now known as the Hellegion. Like yeah. this was, this was meant to be a thing all the way back at the beginning of time like for those of you who were left behind for those of you who are surviving and who are amongst me now you are the Hellegion. you are my legion the legion from hell and we yep. will legion utilize our numbers to oppose god once it's again true. no that's really cool it's a really good cliffhanger too it's like oh you were always meant to be in the Hellegion. you were always meant to be my pawns <laughs> my demons my <laughs> yep. soldiers like but, uh, this was pre-written but to be honest uh before adrian start brought the the guitar riffs and the melody for megalomaniac i already have a lyrics a storyline before before the megalomaniac i already wrote the lyrics i think i it takes me like six months i guess uh, because I just want to check all the lyrics uh, connected with the other songs. No, it's really uh, cool. As I can say, it's it's too difficult. It's too difficult. I have to I have to study more English and English. <laughs> it's too difficult for me. No, dude, it's honestly, really and and this is that's that's one thing I wanted to comment on before too. Um. Like, as far as I'm concerned, man, I would actually prefer if more bands from around the world utilized their language more and started forging their own sound. Uh, Jap Japan does it really, really well, right? So you got, like, Japanese pop, you got J-Rock, you got Amin and 
anime anime openings and anime closing tracks all those songs like at the end of the day what really intrigues a lot of people over here in the west is how they utilize their language to do the time signatures and rhyming schemes that they do that are absolutely completely different from what we do over here so as someone who participates in as much music as possible whether here in the u.s over in Malaysia with you guys' stuff, Japan with bands like Crystal Lake or Lisa yeah. or um, um, there's there are so many. There are really so many. Crossfit. Crossfit. What's up? Crossfit. Crossfit? From Japan. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crossfit, right. Um, that, That's a band I actually need to listen to more for sure. But what I'm trying to say is don't worry about like really honing in on your English um, Because you speak it really well. All of you do in session. And so did Andrian. You guys all speak language. Speak language. Jesus. You all speak English really well. And you speak it well enough for a Wonder Bread white boy like me to understand. So I think you're off to a pretty good start. And I would definitely encourage that you utilize um, your language more in your music in the future. Because I think a lot more heads will turn. For those who are more intelligent and for those who are more open to like participating really in other cultures with the language in the music. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and bring and us, for me bring us the and ES. for me and for me, uh it's easy to wrote the lyrics. Uh and for me it's too difficult to talk <laughs> with the English. Because we don't practicing the English in our daily day, something like that. Right. It's the same thing as me, like trying to learn Japanese right now. But in reality, <laughs> most people, if not English, they speak Spanish over here with, uh, with you know, that culture kind of integrating more with ours as the years pass, um, especially down here in the South. Like a lot more people speak Spanish and shit than they do uh, um, English, but like kind of more or less the opposite of way opposite way around but yeah i definitely encourage you guys to utilize your language more in your music if you haven't done that already and every now and then just like the japanese do just have like one word maybe during the breakdown where you're like what the fuck is up and then you just like do go into a breakdown or something that would be fun <laughs> that would be cool or like this is megalomaniac <clears throat> like all that fun shit that that would be so much fun and obviously this record is already written it's already done it's going to be presented to the public here pretty soon but to future me that is the end of the under the skish under the skish jesus the under the skin session 